Welcome back to Brain Bites. Joining me today is Kobe Dudley. Kobe, how are you doing today? I'm doing all right, Blake. How are you? Fantastic. So today we're going to talk about the basics of computer hardware. So what is and what do these things accomplish? So we're going to talk about RAM, we're going to talk about CPU or processor, and we're going to talk about the hard drive of the computer. Okay. So let's start with probably the most complicated one, the processor. So the processor, as I like to tell people, is the brain of the computer. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit, what does the processor do and how do we improve the performance of our computer with processors so honestly the thing about the processor is the the brain is honestly it's an excellent analogy because they operate very similar to our brain it's electrical impulses that make it think um you know the processors what actually does things on the computer it's what makes you know each thing that you're doing your threading you know which is your individual tasks your processes right. that you're doing there's a reason they're called processes with your processor yep um, I mean, honestly, it's raw speed for the most part. Right. Um, so, so a processor lets you do is it basically the speed of the processor and it, you know, you hear cores, right? So mm -hmm. there's cores of the processor. So each, each core that a processor has is a, a basically a location on the processor where it can process things. So mm -hmm. you hear a four core, two gigahertz processor, that's going to be faster than a two core or dual core one gigahertz processor mm -hmm. and slower than an eight core five gigahertz processor, right? Mm -hmm. And again, it's very similar to your brain. Your brain has multiple different sections in right. it. So you can process your information. A CPU works the same way. It's there's you know, if you've got four cores and you know, they have hyper threading, eight threads where you can be doing two things per core, it's just like multitasking with your brain. It's it's basically the same thing. Right. And so when you get a faster processor or a processor with more cores, that let lets you do usually one thing faster so mm -hmm. when it, it doesn't necessarily let you do multitask on the computer faster but it whatever you're doing on the computer it'll go a little faster mm -hmm. and so if you want to speed up that multitasking that's when ram enters the picture so yep. ram or if you want the full uh word it's random access memory um what is ram so ram is and I know we're going to get into storage in a little bit with hard drives and things like that, but RAM is also storage, basically. It's little files and things like that, but it's stuff that's moving very quickly. It's coming in, coming out, going in, going out. You know, it can have something to do with your web browser. Your, you know, if you're playing a game, if you're working in Word, something like that. It's little bitty packets, basically, that are flying around the computer really quickly because you're constantly working with them, and it's... It, it pairs in with the processor because instead of the processor having to write everything to a slower you know, storage medium, the RAM is way faster. It's got higher right. speeds. And so while memory, you think of like a memory card as somewhere that you store something, memory and storage are two very different things mm -hmm. in a computer, but essentially the same thing. Memory is really, really fast storage and in small capacities. Yes. So your computer probably has four, eight, or 16 gig gigabytes of RAM mm -hmm. and a one terabyte hard drive or solid yeah. state drive. If you had one terabyte of RAM in your computer, that would be outrageously expensive. Yeah, you absolutely don't need that. I'm talking hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah. for, for a terabyte of RAM. And so RAM, when you are doing multiple things, RAM is basically write, you, you write the processes to the RAM and it kind of queues it up for the mm -hmm. processor to, to function and then the processor outputs it back to the RAM and then you, you interface with mm -hmm. it on the computer. So when your processor the faster your processor can do things, basically, the faster it can chew through that that line of things waiting in the RAM. Mm -hmm. So the more RAM you have, the more things you can do at once. And then the faster the processor is, the faster it can take those multiple things out of the RAM. Mm -hmm. So I like to say that RAM lets you do more things on the computer, and the processor lets you do those more things faster. Yes. So if you have a ridiculously fast processor mm -hmm. and four gigs of RAM, you might be able to run one program really 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 fast but if you try and do four things at once you might have some slowdown mm -hmm. and in the opposite if you have a terabyte of ram you're going to be able to do a ton of things you're gonna have a million chrome tabs open but it's not going to happen very quickly if you have a slow processor yep so that's cpu that's ram mm -hmm. now probably the least complicated of the components but mm, probably where we have the most to talk about is hard drive or storage, and we're gonna talk about hard drive, HDD, versus solid state disk, mm -hmm. SSD. So what? let's start with what is a hard drive? What is storage so in general? Storage is 
data at rest, basically. That's right. the best, you know, with the RAM, it's constantly moving in and out, in and out, in and out, all over. Storage is not having to move as fast or not at all. It could be your archive. It could be, you know, stuff that you access occasionally, you know, your pictures from 2015 that you are never actually going to go back and look at. Right. That's storage. You're going to put those back there. You're not constantly accessing them. And it's now the RAM will pull stuff out of the storage if you're accessing it actively. Right. But then it'll put it back in. The and storage is where I put stuff, right? Mm -hmm. It's where the operating system lives. Mm -hmm. the, you know what actually what you're actually using on the on the computer, the software that makes that turns the hardware into something you can use, and it's also where you put your data. Now, the two things that we talked about SSD versus HDD. What is an HDD? So HDD stands for hard disk drive, right. and the key factor in that is the disk. Um, inside an HDD, there's a little magnetic platter that's spinning around really, really fast or really slow, depending on what <laughs> kind you have. And it's reading magnetic data. Basically, right. the and data so is encoded onto it. That's the, that's what you, you hear them called spinning disk drives, too. Mm -hmm. That's where there's an actual disk, and there's a little arm that zooms back and forth across mm -hmm. it, and it's actually reading the data off of a spinning disk inside mm -hmm. the hard drive. And basically, the way you add more storage is adding more layers to that disk. Mm -hmm. So in a small spinning disk drive, there's just one. And then when you're looking at like a four terabyte spinning disk drive, there's probably like 10 stacked on top of each other. And there's arms inside of each of them that kind of go over um, and read that data. Mm -hmm. Now, that is a, there's a physical limitation to those drives where you can only, the, the platter can only spin so fast. Mm -hmm. Usually, most desktop hard drives are around 5,400 RPM, so 5,000. 400 mm -hmm. revolutions per minute and most servers are around 10,000 to 15,000 rpm but there's a reason those sit in a closet somewhere oh, far away from you because they're really really loud because mm -hmm. that disc in there is spinning 15,000 times a minute um and there's a there's a limitation about either mm -hmm. how fast the platter can spin and then there's a reason that server drives stopped at 15,000 rpm because there's also a limitation of how fast that arm can go across that yeah. platter you could spin the the platter at 20,000 RPM, but if the arm can't move fast enough, you can't read the data. Now, the inverse of that is a solid state drive. Mm -hmm. And a solid state drive is? So think of a solid state drive as a just an upgraded version of a USB flash drive. It's the same kind of technology. So, you know, you don't when you plug in your USB drive, it doesn't start spinning. It right. just there's electrical stuff going across to storage chips. Solid state drives are just larger collections of those storage chips. A and lot like a memory card for a camera. Yes. Or it's, your PS2 back they're in They're all the day. same technology. It's Flash. Right. Um, and, you know, think of Flash. It's, it's going to be faster, you know, like the superhero. It's fast. Right. And because a solid-state drive doesn't have to spin up, it doesn't have that little arm going back and forth. It's literally just data shooting across electrical channels. Because of that, it's moving as quickly as the electricity can move, which is obviously a lot faster than anything we could build to spin. Right. So, so when you when you want to get information off of a, a spinning disk drive, you have to send the request through all the electrical components of the computer, mm -hmm. and then it has to literally find where on the platter that drive is, read the data, and send it back. Mm -hmm. Now, that happens all obviously within the span of milliseconds too, but it's the difference of probably five to 600 milliseconds as opposed to on a solid state drive when it's all electrical, it goes to the electrical systems, it knows right where it is because it's electricity and it's happening at quite, um, literally almost the speed of light. And then coming back, you're talking about 10 milliseconds. So mm -hmm. it is literally a hundred times faster than the spinning disk drive. Mm -hmm. And the other thing, the big thing about spinning disk versus solid state is the reliability, right? So inside of a solid state drive, it's just that it's solid state. There are no moving parts, a mm -hmm. lot less to go wrong as opposed to a, a spinning disk drive where you're putting essentially tiny holes into that platter mm -hmm. and the magnets are looking for those holes. That's how they work really. And the drive is spinning. There's an arm that's spinning. There's a needle that's reading over it. There's lights and lasers, and there's mm -hmm. a bunch of stuff going on inside those hard disk drives. And if you drop one of them and one of those tiny little components breaks, your drive is done. That's why you know those external hard drives, the big ones, not the little uh, flash drives, but like a big external hard drive. You don't want to drop those. Mm -hmm. Drop a laptop or something with a with a hard drive in it. You have a bunch of issues. Solid state drives a lot more resilient because things are literally soldered to circuit boards inside mm -hmm. of those. And there's just a lot less to go wrong and a lot, I mean, a, a much, they have a longer runtime. Mm -hmm. you know, they're sensitive to heat, but they don't really get that hot and they, they don't have anything going on in there. So that 
the chance of them degrading over time is significantly less. Well, and those moving pieces can also, you know, if you accidentally jostle your computer and you have a hard disk in there, it can scratch the disk. Yeah. And, you know, just like a CD, that it's gone. Yeah. You're you're not repairing that. So So I think we that's that's about the three components we've talked. We've RAM is basically your multitasking ability on the computer, mm -hmm. your processor, your CPU, um, which is the brain of the computer and how fast you can do things, and then storage and the difference between H HDD and SSD. Mm -hmm. um, anything else you think we need to add into these? Oh, I think that's about it for now. Awesome. Well, uh, Kobe, thanks for joining me, and we'll see you guys next week. Yeah.